Hello and welcome back to my Twitch live streaming of KSP's Hard Career Mode. What you're about to see was recorded on June 14th and June 17th and has been edited for YouTube. On June 14th I spent the bulk of the stream in sandbox mode so that's why there's only a bit of career mode content to include from that day. I usually stream on Saturday and Sunday at 11am Pacific Time, 6pm GMT and on Wednesday at 4pm Pacific Time, 11pm GMT. Now on to my commentary from June 14th. Okay, we've got daylight on this situation. Mission control. We need to do a jewel mission. We need to jewel mission, do a jewel mission, get... What do we need? We need suborbital orbital spaceflight on Bop, on Val. We need to orbit around Lathe. Land on Bop. Oh, I don't like the sound of suborbital spaceflight on Jewel. Um... Fly by Val, fly by Jewel, orbit around Jewel. Well, orbit around Jewel, Leith, Leith, orbit around Leith is easy. Orbit around Jewel is easy. We've got two guys who want orbit around Leith, so that's fine. So we should air break at Leith, exit out into Jewel orbit. Fly by Jewel should be fine, right? I mean, as long as we're in Jewel orbit, we fly we fly by Jewel. Suborbital space flight on Val will be difficult. This this Lidolin Lidolin is a troublesome one. Suborbital orbital can be achieved by having a crash landing on entering the system and then correct to the right air brake height, but uh, we have to be in orbit first, then go suborbital, right? Uh, well, we can build this. Let's just see if there's any other... Uh, build a new orbital station around Gilly. Nine Kerbals. I don't want to do that yet. Plant a flag on Lathe. Nobody wants to actually set foot on Lathe, I don't think. Yeah, nobody wants to set foot on life. The only landing is Bob. So we gotta have to land on Bob again. The, uh, otherwise, we've got contracts for land on Val and land on Lathe. But I want to try out this tourist contract for once. Rescue Embry Kerman from orbit of the sun. That's tough and it's not giving me much cash there. Then they don't tell me what orbit Embry is in. Okay, well, let's build uh, something that can take care of this. But uh, we've. Oh, I, I wanted to check out what technologies we can unlock first. So we'll once again be trying to have a single little lander for the bot part. I guess the nuke would make sense, right? Hold on, let me just double check everything else. The nuke is probably the most serious thing. Everything else is trivial by comparison. Oh, unless we do scanning. Ah, oh, that's that's tempting. Ooh, and the fuel cell. But we've got good solar panels. We're fine. So, which way do we go? Do we go nuke? Or do we go in situ resource utilization? Just scanning. Well, I guess the nuke is probably the better immediate impact for us. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for the nuke. Okay. So now we have a nuke but we we have to use liquid fuel tanks which which is not great but I guess we can manage maybe this is an occasion where we build the mission in orbit instead of launching everything at once and just going for it put it together in orbit so let's just start from well maybe maybe the station part is also good this is with the docking port and the remote control module. 
Oh, speaking of which, what's the what's the heat tolerance for the docking port? Oh, it's 2,000 as well. So I guess that wouldn't be too bad. This needs some solar panels, though. Yeah, I didn't have a solar panel on the lander. So once they get into... Once they get back, how are they going to survive? Um, <laughs> I don't have any way of getting them back down to Kerbin with this. This module needs to be redone. This isn't the right thing to send at all. We've got three... Three people, three tourists. We need to send this. What about just a big heat shield on the dock port on the top of the craft? Then decouple it after it's useless. Do we need a heat shield? I don't think we need a heat shield, do we? Or, well, Leith, right. Leith was trouble. Hmm. Now, I like Mikko's suggestion of just having it... Yeah, okay, I've, I've got the order of operate. Uh, no, we will have a heat shield. Oh, well, it, it, but it's it's mass. It's not good. Anyway, um... I have an idea. Uh, not not on this tank, but since we're going to send it up empty, we can go with a larger fuel tank. We can go with a better engine. Probably we don't need the poodle. I don't want it on the top because I want to redock. Uh, no, I want to keep this open for docking with the with the refueler, the fuel vessel, because we're going to send this up unfueled. We'll keep the lander part fueled. We need parachutes though. Maybe we should do it more like Apollo? Huh. Maybe we should do it more like Apollo. Then again, the lander looks really fragile down here. And we have no way to cover it up. Ah. We have no fairing to put it around it. Forget that. How much Delta V would this have? 2,035. 2,035. But then that's including the heat shield. Which we can dump a lot of it later off of. Okay. And this is gonna be after the transfer stage. We're gonna have a separate transfer stage. 17 tons though. We're, we're pretty up against it. Nuclear transfer stage would be an idea. How are we going to do this? Maybe I should just make a, a nuclear stage here. Let's see. Oh, we only have the tri-coupler. So all we can really do is... Fuel up with liquid fuel and then go with the nuke. What kind of Delta V does this have? Let me add the heat shield back on just so the calculation is consistent. Oh look, it's 2059. Um, so there's basically no difference between this and the LV-909 if the LV-909 can use the oxidizer as well. Okay, I think I'll go with the LV-909 on this stage then. Yeah, if the, now if the liquid fuel had more mass to it, that would work out. It's actually the, I mean, of course in real life, uh, liquid fuel, the oxidizer is always, almost always heavier anyway, because oxygen is heavy. Yeah, it's two tons lighter, but the Delta V worked out the way it was. Uh, the LV-909 was, well, I guess there is that benefit. 
Yeah, okay. I see that. Okay, and fueling it in orbit would be easier. It's just that this is unacceptably, unacceptably tall. Yeah, okay, maybe. I don't know, it looks weird. Well, maybe we can make it look better. Hold on. Let me just see its delta V. Uh, with everything staging at once instead of, uh, sort of asparagus staging. We have less fuel, don't we? Is that right? No, we have about the same. 2,384. Could do six of them. It'll fill in the gap at least. I guess we should get a bigger heat shield. Or we could get a smaller heat shield and put separate little heat shields on those. But I bet the base mass makes it not worthwhile. Eh, maybe. I don't like the look of this. Oh, I haven't put a heat shield on this part. If we're going to talk about doing everything legally, I have to have a heat shield there too. Is it true that putting nose cones on the bottom helps aerodynamics too? Um, I suspect it does, but I don't have proof. Proof. I'm actually thinking about doing that, but not entirely sure whether I should put those or put some additional heat shielding. But I guess the nose cones might be alright. Struts. Lots and lots of struts. But how much delta V does this really have? It's tough to check a asparagus stage thing, but I guess I don't have to. Apart from thermal engines with reactors and microwave stuff from Interstellar, but uh, oh, uh, you haven't used nuke engines except for the thermal engines, and well, you you've got more thorough grounding in nuclear nuclear engineering than uh, we've got in stock here. That's for sure with the Interstellar stuff. Let's see, well, I'll have to go in order of the draining and see how this all works out. Everything filled up? 715 there. Okay, I see the trend here. And that got pulled the rest of it off. So 600 plus 700, that's 1300. Probably we'll estimate 800 there. So that's 2100. So probably about 3000 meters per second. I'm not going to calculate it out any more than that. That's not a lot. That's not going to get us back home either. We'll need to refuel it over there. It'll get over there. It gets refueled again. Hello everyone, and I'm trying out a few new things as you can probably tell. First of all, new music. But the uh, key thing here is that little thing that's supposed to say what the music is is not changing appropriately right now. It's OC Remix stuff, but hold on a sec. Let me try and get it to understand what's going on, maybe. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see if it can work now. That's the right song, at least. Okay, so, how is everyone? 
We're going to continue uh, career mode, but I have a few other changes to mention. First of all, I've added Kerbal Engineer and Ambient Light Adjustment to this. And that's just because we're at the point where it's going to be really tedious for me to be using the calculator. I don't mind using the calculator, but I think maybe you guys <laughs> don't want to wait through the calculation of every single stage. Uh, so yeah, that, that's an idea. And so uh, now we have the toolbar, and I just have one mod there. That's ambient light adjustment, and then we can tuck it up here somewhere. So yeah, I've bitten the bullet. I've gotten the Kerbal Engineer and Ambient Light Adjustment. So here we are, Kerbal Engineer. And let me pick up where I left off with the Jewel Mission. And hopefully we'll have some good music. I've tried to select some good tracks from OC Remix. And uh, mainly from, uh, what was it? Uh, Chrono Symphonic, uh, Final Fantasy VII, and Xenogears. This is still gonna take some thinking. Uh, and probably some uh, more clever staging here. 7 p.m. where Devon is. Yep, Europe. Yeah, well, I try to stream earlier on the weekends for you European guys. Um, I'm I'm confused. Hold on. Just get started. And I'm already confused. This is annoying. Oh, I sent. Okay, yeah, I'm missing something. I'm missing fuel. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So there we have the situation there with a very minor uh, lander stage, and that is to land on Bob. And then this whole thing has uh, looks like 2,948. 2,900. I still feel like I need a separate transfer stage. Because we have to do a lot of bouncing around. We have to get into orbit around... I mean, Leif orbit will be error breaking. Then we have to transfer out to Jewel. And then head over to Val. Get to suborbital on Val. And then land on Bob. I don't want to do all that without having... And then we have to bring them all back. We have to bring them all back. That's the pain. Remember struts between the decouplers. Hold on, we're doing macro stuff here first. Then we'll strut everything up. Double the fuel. This burn is gonna be slow enough as it is with the thrust to weight ratios here. Double this fuel? Um. Why do I not want to? I don't want to do that. Um. We're gonna have to send two missions. We gotta send two launches. This is gonna have to go up in two launches. Right. Okay. So we gotta send this up, and then we gotta send a separate transfer stage up. We're not gonna send it all at the same time. Yeah, that'll make more sense. This is not the best place for the solar panels, they're gonna all fall off. Hmm, uh, so I guess the central tank idea, but then they'll be blocked by these tanks. If I put them any closer, they'll be blocked by these tanks. If I put them on here, they fall off. Oh yeah, launch it empty and fuel it in LKO. Okay. Uh, okay, well that's, st but uh, adding more to this stage doesn't really help. Uh, I mean, not as much as we'd like. Well, that makes me feel a lot better, but uh, the shape of it isn't exactly great. We've definitely got balance issues. That nuclear engine. Okay, so how much is this all empty? Well, this is definitely under the mass requirements of our launcher. That's really tall. So 2,000 there and 2,000 to get around. Still not enough to get back, necessarily. Ah, uh, we definitely need this stage to carry us all the way, don't we? We can't be short on Delta V there. Crud. So, hold on, let me, sorry, fuel this back up. Because otherwise the LVN is blocked by the heat shield. 
we need the poodle to get us all the way to to our target. 1,591 isn't going to do the trick. So, more fuel. What can I do? Well, that'll do it. But this is a tall payload. Let's put our rocket underneath it to see how that works out. The unflippable. I'm wondering why... Okay, I need my 2,161 meters per second. What if that's not enough? Thought fairings were too te heavy. They are, and people keep insisting that I use them. It sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, this uh, this launcher was built with the fairings, and this payload is definitely going to be one that requires them. So I can't do anything. I have to use it. This is too unwieldy a, f a payload to go without fairings. Okay, that's the fuel there gone. I'm not gonna get the fuel out of the round 8 toroidal tank. It's probably too much. Uh, why don't you build two ships? One to get Leif and back, and the other to go around the jewel system. Get to Leif and back? Well, we only need to orbit Leif. And we got to airbreak at Leif to get to the jewel system. The only Leif bit is to orbit it. So is it really worthwhile? Now, because I'd rather build two ships, one to send them and one to rescue them. That sounds like a good idea. Sounds right to me. Uh, this is not a decoupler. I keep forgetting that. Okay, well. Here we go again with this fairing. Okay, more struts, but uh, less less batteries. That'll get us to, well, three struts, that's all I've got. This isn't enough struts. We've got struts on these tanks at least. I don't like this at all. I'll tell you that right now. And... I don't like this so much that I'm not going to send the Kerbals up with this. I'm going to send them up with the fuel. Uh, upgrade the VAB. Hold on, let me uh, save this now before it uh, does something horrible to me. Uh, it's enough. Okay, well... Hold on, how much is this launch going to cost? Both ships go to Leif, one stays there while the other tours the moons with the tourists. Then it gets back to Leif while the tourists return with the first ship, while the second stays around Leif. The other return... The... Tours the moon... Okay. It sounds like what you're talking about is we send one ship and then rescue them, right? I mean, is there any difference between that uh, uh, from uh, sending them like this and then rescuing them later except that we don't have this tall, tall, tall fairing? Our problem is that we've got this stupid heat shield here. Somebody insisted that we have. Um, otherwise, we could use this LVN to deal with it. The journey, I mean. Can the LVN survive air breaking around Lathe? Or is it gonna blow up? No, I, I, I have knowledge of risk management. This is an important thing. So uh, I have to know my numbers to manage my risk and uh, that is how you do not get into negative numbers on your funds. So here we go. I think our risk is sufficiently managed here. My time zone is Pacific Daylight Time currently. I'm in California. Use your freaking heat shields. What the would the EDB say? The EDB says that if you don't need it, you don't need it, right? I think that's what the EDB says. It is inelegant to carry more than you need on a mission. 
Uh, then what's with all those nose cones if you don't need them? Uh, they're, they're not very heavy. <laughs> uh, but uh, also worried about air breaking around Lathe. Uh, remember, things blew up last time we air break around. Every time we air break around Lathe, things blow up. Well, let's put more struts. We can do that much. Uh, don't worry, I'll dump the extra fuel. Hold on. Let's just launch this turkey and see what happens, and we'll send the crew up with the extra fuel. The thing is that this mission requires a lot of Delta V of the ship. The way requires less Delta V on each ship. I, I, I honestly, at this point, I'm just curious whether this can fly. <laughs> I'll, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know whether this thing can fly, and I want to find out, so... We are attempting to see whether this can actually fly. It's got an unwieldy payload with lots of struts, and the rocket is called unflippable, but uh, this might be the, the time it does. This is the least elegant rocket I've made in ages. I have not... this is a horrible thing. But, let's go on with it. Up it goes. Um, I sense problems. I'm going to take SAS off. I sense that I could probably control it better. Guys, I'm going to try and control the rocket, so uh, hold on a sec. Fine adjustments using control stick here. This may be the time that this rocket flips. We'll have to see. Please, music, don't suddenly pop something weird on me. I've got a bit of an inclination, but I'll adjust that later. My staging is wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, crud. Oh, crud. Oh, crud. Oh, crud. Come on. Uh, 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 no. Oh! Oh? Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Wait a minute. Is that like our entire payload? Yeah. Hold on. We are boarding this rocket. Oh, no, we can't. We've lost the controller. Ah. Uh, hey. I should... Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, hold on. No? Where's my controller? Not you. Why don't I have control over you? I've uh, the controller should be in here. Why can't I control this? Thought the controller was in the service bay. Can somebody please tell me all the inside went? All the inside went. No. It's here! The probe core is here! It's right here! Why can't I control you? Glitched! Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, I moved the camera into the bay already. It's glitched. I should have been able to recover this bloody thing! It's not fair. What can I say? It is now on escape trajectory. Um, well, that's it. It is now in this orbit. Disconnected. Well, what the heck is a service bay for? 
disconnected. Honestly. Okay. Well, this is... Uh, I think we're going to have to go with a much smaller mission. And uh, maybe something like what uh, Mikko suggested. Okay, not something that's going to fill up the uh, 3.75 meter fairing or anything like that. Okay, back to Space Center.